My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you hear, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Sunday is an important day of the week. In the Christian life, it is important because it is the Dies Domini, Latin for the Day of the Lord. It is the Day of the Lord because it is the Day of the Lord's Resurrection. And so it's some sort of weekly Easter. Today happens to be the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. It also happens to be the 13th of October 2019, which means it is extra special because of the gift of the new saints who are being canonized in Rome today by Pope Francis. And among the new saints, one particularly stands out, and that is none other than the new saint John Cardinal Henry Newman, that Englishman who was beatified by the Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI in Birmingham, England in September of 2010. And now, this Sunday, he will be raised to the altars as a saint. He converted to Catholicism on the 8th of October, 1847. For this reason, we want to tell our Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for the new saints. For as we pray in the preface of the saints, in crowning the merits of the saints, you crown your own gifts. But now let's focus on the Gospel of today. It is taken from the Gospel of Luke, and it is the account of the healing of the ten lepers who came to Jesus. This happened along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as the Lord was entering one of the villages there, he was met by these ten lepers. Now, it is hard for us to imagine what the life of a leper was like, but it was not pretty. It is a serious disease that causes painful rough areas on the skin and that badly damages nerves and flesh. It sort of eats into the flesh. It is ugly, causes wasting of muscle and production of deformities. And it was often fatal. So, you know, we're not talking about acne or pimples. No, no, no. This was serious stuff. And so you understand why socially they were required by law to be quarantined outside the Israelite society. Part of the reason was that this disease was very contagious. Religiously also they were ritually unclean and therefore they were not allowed to participate in worship. And that meant that what they did to go to Jesus was already a very bold statement, a very bold move. Indeed, they were daring. You keep in mind that they will live outside the community and they live in colonies. And in fact, they're also required by law to shout whenever someone will approach so that, you know, they'll be warned of their presence. It was that bad. And here they are, not too far from Jesus. And they start calling out to him, Jesus, Master, take pity on us. And what does Jesus do? He answers their prayer and he tells them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And off they go. Then Luke tells us what actually happened. That in fact on their way, they realized that they were cleansed, that they were cured of this horrible disease. And one of them, seeing that he had been cured, turns back praising God on the top of his voice. And he goes back to Christ and throws himself at the feet of our Lord and thanks him. What a wonderful gesture. Surely, Jesus, you must have been moved by this Samaritan. At the same time, we cannot help but notice a tone of sadness in our Lord when he says, We're not ten cleansed. Where are the nine? He shows his surprise. Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Let's pause here for a moment and think. Jesus, how many times have you thought this about me? Because I have received so much from you. In fact, everything that I have is a gift, a gift from you. And all these talents that you have given me, how many times have I said thank you? How many times do I say thank you during the day? Isn't it true that our lives have been filled with divine cures? With our Lord listening to our cry, implicit and explicit, 
and answering our prayer. And how many times have I said, thank you, Lord. It is also true that we can never repay God for all his gifts. In other words, that our thanksgiving and our response will always fall short in comparison to God's infinite dignity and that immense love that he has for us. To drive this point home, think of your divine filiation. The fact that God has adopted us and has made us his children. Can anyone, honestly speaking, be truly grateful for that? Can we really repay that with our thanksgiving? You realize how we fall short. Maybe you've seen this scene countless times of kids who receive a gift and off they go to enjoy their gift and they have to be caught mid-stride by their parents or their you know, their dad or their mom. And they're told, what do you say? And they have to respond, thank you. And then they keep going. <laughs> That's you and me. At least we have to pause and tell our Lord, thank you, before we run off to enjoy that gift. I assure you, the heart of the giver warms up to that thank you of the kid. While it is true that God doesn't need our thanksgiving because he is perfect, it is good for you, it is good for me, it is good for us to give you thanks, Lord. There's this story told in the days when ice cream sundaes used to cost much less. But any old boy who enters a hotel coffee shop and he sits at a table and then a waitress puts a glass of water in front of him and the boy asks the waitress how much is an ice cream sundae? 50 cents, she answers. So the boy pulls his hand out of his pocket and studies the coins that he has in his hands and after a while looks up and asks well how much is a plain dish of ice cream? And by now more and more people are waiting at the table and the waitress is growing impatient. You can imagine with all these uh, customers, clients. And she answers rather brusquely, you know, 35 cents. So the little boy again counts his coins and then he says, I'll have the plain ice cream. So the waitress brings the ice cream, puts a bill on the table and walks away. So the boy enjoys his ice cream, then pays the cashier and leaves. And so the waitress comes back to clear the table and she begins to cry. She begins to cry as she is wiping the table because there, placed neatly beside that empty dish, were two nickels and five pennies. In other words, a total of 15 cents. So you see what happens is that uh, this boy, he decided not to have the Sunday because he wanted to have enough money to leave her a tip. And that's exactly what he did. So let's resolve to be always grateful. However small the gift, let us be always grateful. And we can learn this also from our Blessed Mother. You remember how she bursts into a prayer of praise, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. She is forever grateful for that fact that our Lord had looked down upon her lowliness and how she had decided that she will be the mother of the Redeemer. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into practice. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.